Hey, this is Rick with Mike and Rick Outdoors, and I've got my Camp Chef Alpine stove from Bass Pro. They sent that to us this week. Of course, Mike's in Oklahoma, I'm here in Colorado. But I'm gonna be doing an opening and setting it up so you can see what things you've got to do to be prepared for your first night out on your camping trip. So stay with me to the end. I'm going to tell you all about Mike's Winterwell stove and the differences between that one and this one, how he set it up. And there's several videos we've already done on it. And some of it was with cooking and things that he's cooked on it. And it's really cool. You'll really enjoy it. So uh, hang with me to the end to see that. All right, so let's take a look at this and let's just get going on it. Here's the box. The first thing it has here is the instruction booklet. Now I'll have information up on the screen. So as I'm unboxing this real quick, I'm going to show you that so that if you don't have this and you can always get that online. In fact, I'm going to leave a link below for the Camp Chef stove and anything I find as far as, you know, instructions online about it. But I'll have some stuff on the screen here. So here's the bottom of it. You can already see the legs here. All right, so there's a door. I got this latch right here. So just like the winter well that Mike has, everything comes in this inside the stove. Here's all the pipes. I think the only thing left in here is all of this packing material. Actually, one thing that's pretty good at is maybe helping start the fire. All right, so I have everything out here. Well, let's look at the parts list first. And there are five chimney sections. Let's just go through each one of these real fast. And we have the legs. There are, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. There are five chimney sections. Here's the four legs and they have an adjustment to them to help you level out this, save your tents on a little bit uneven ground. So that's nice, that's helpful. All right, so this piece right here is the wood grate. You're gonna set your firewood on, then the ashes will drop down below it. Now, the one thing I will tell you that I've already read about this is when you've burned you know, some firewood, you never want to leave ash in after you're done and your camping trip's over because it has moisture in it and it'll rust this Camp Chef Alpine stove out. So make sure you always empty out the ashes when your, your camping trip's over. All right, we have two wire shelves right here. They go on either side of the stove. I'm actually really looking forward to cooking some things on this. So. We're going out this coming weekend. This is Labor Day weekend of 2023. And we're gonna be taking our new tent out from Kodiak Canvas. It's a 10 by 10 cabin style tent. And we are gonna take that out this weekend and we're gonna put the stove up in it and uh, we'll be cooking some things out there. So it'll be kind of fun. So keep an eye out for that video coming up. Okay, here's your dampener right here, important. and. This last thing here, it's not shown, but it's the wire mesh spark arrestor. This is really important to really help and keep, to keep your tent from catching on fire and burning down. This wire mesh spark arrestor is gonna go over the top pipe and this will keep the sparks and things from blowing out. All right, let's get going and put this thing together. And the first thing you do, you turn it upside down and put the legs on it. All right, that should be easy enough to do. Maybe there's a certain way this goes on. And there is, there's a screw hole on this side right here. So I, I just unscrewed it a little bit and then I'm gonna just tighten it up. It just fits right in there real nice. Now I find it a little interesting here. Two of these legs don't have a hole in them, possibly the adjustable side. But that's why we put these together to start with to learn before we get out on our camping trip. Always put your stove on a level surface as much as possible. This is a little bit heavy. I don't recall how heavy it is, but it is a little heavy. Okay, the next thing it calls for is to put this wood grate in. 
If you can see this okay. So there's no hooks to go on it that it sits on. It just sits on the bottom of the cylinder. Okay, now we're gonna put these shelves on, on each side. So it looks like they just go in the hole right here. Nothing difficult about that. They angle up a little bit. And I'm sure if you're putting heavy things on it, then it'll help it as it maybe settles a little if you've got much weight. All right, goes in there really well. All right, next thing is the stove pipe assembly. Okay, just had to shake it a little bit. And now one of these has holes in it for the damper. And if the instructions were correct, it's the smallest one. There it is. I guess maybe it does get larger as it goes to the top because here's the holes. And you gotta install the damper, dampener here first. Now I wanna say dampener, but it's a damper. Okay, so you just turn this rod here and you've got to install this first. This is the bottom piece. All right, let's try this again because this spring right here has to be depressed in here on the outside to keep there's some tension on this. And that's why I was struggling here looking at it. Okay, so when I put this in here, I had to depress this spring here on the outside farther in and turn it because it was just moving freely. But you can see now how it's in there and there's some tension on it. So then it, when it's vertical, when this handle is vertical, then you're opening that up and when you turn it horizontal it closes it, the, the damper i just wanted to show you that you've got to get that in there push it farther in and then turn it so you have to play with it a little bit i had to mess around with it a little bit before i got it to work all right so evidently this piece that's narrow goes on the bottom and then it fits right in here okay so this does go in this way here I really don't want to mess up my new you know, stove here, but I'm going to probably be doing that anyway. So you probably should be actually putting my gloves back on for this. So one thing I do want to mention in the instructions, it says when there's really high winds, you want to use sheet metal screws or I, I, I don't remember if that's the actual name, but you want to use screws to secure each one of these pipes. And I'll tell you what, some of the storms we've been in through here recently in Colorado, absolutely would agree. And you might put it up and go, oh, I don't need the screws in. And I don't have screws right now, so I need to get some. You might think that you don't need to put screws in because it's a beautiful day. But in it real quick, the, the storms can kick up real fast here and you'll be in a lot of trouble. Now it said go from smaller to larger. So we're going to do our best here to see how this works. Now I will say there's maybe a, some you might want to play with this when you put your tent up. But I have seen it where what Mike did on his tent, he put, now I, I'm already going to get in trouble here, probably need to put these together down before I put them up on the ground because this is going to get too tall for me. But what Mike did is he put it through the roof and then he went outside and finished the rest. So we'll have to see what works best when I'm out there camping this weekend. But I can tell you right now that I'm going to pull it off here, put it on the ground so I can reach all of the pipes. Now you might say, hey Rick, you should have made it look really nice and lined up all these seams. You know. Does it really matter? But you know, for you guys, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna line the seam up right here. Well, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the handle this way, but when I'm putting it together, I'll show you. I'm gonna line these seams up just because it seems like a nice thing to do. I'm gonna drop it all here. And so we're gonna line it up. Whoa, that went down. That went down a little farther. 
Yeah, that's wanting to slide down in there more. So that's why I'd say be careful. It's already bending it a little bit. I'll tell you what I'm going to be doing though. I am going to get some screws because, you know, even right out here, I don't want these to slide down too far. But also when I'm out there and dealing with wind, that's going to be a big concern. So I do have some work to do to get ready for the actual trip. And I'm going to want to make sure these are in really good because when I'm in my tent and a big storm kicks up at night, I do not want to have this falling over and it fires inside my tent. So anyway, there's, there's that. It's wanting to go down farther than I want it to go. And you will have additional support here when you put it inside your tent. The, the tent will actually help support it through the roof. See, I've forgotten something already. That wire piece was supposed to go on the top and now it's sticking way up in the air. Right here, this little wire mesh piece that keeps all the sparks down. This should go over this right here. Now, the one thing I don't really like about this, I'm telling you already, when it rains, without a piece on the top, it's gonna rain inside the chimney. And I know there's ad adapters to it, and I, I saw one, but I do not want the rain coming down inside this chimney. But I could tell you already, doesn't matter how much it costs, I'm buying the piece that goes on top because it probably goes on a lot easier than this goes on. All right, that's it. And I can already tell this is not good. This one is not in there very well. All right, now I'm ready to start a fire. And I hope this wind doesn't get kick up too much because this isn't as secure as I want it to be. But it will be by the time I go camping. All right, let's get some firewood and a fire starter and let's get this going because it's gotta run for about two hours. And uh, before that, this enamel, I guess the paint, the enamel has to set up and it, you know, before you put it in your tent and maybe it smells and things like that, but you're supposed to run a fire in here for one to two hours before you put it in a tent. Okay, I've changed my mind about something here. I am taking the stove pipe off. The wind's already kicking up and I don't have it secured. I don't have the tent, the top of the tent to hold it down. I don't have the screws in here. If the wind blows this down and I grab it with my hands, it's gonna be hot, I'm gonna burn my hands, I have to have my gloves on. So for safety reasons today, I'm not gonna have this up. So taking it down, I'm gonna run the fire in this here in stove by itself. So you can see already, you better secure this pipe before you go camping and know how you're gonna secure it. All right, so let's get into this and I, I want to show you how I'm going to secure it, but I wanna keep the, the pipe vertical as much as possible. And I have a level here and I also have these screws here. They're self drilling. Well, anyway, it's a Phillips, Pan Phillips. Anyway, I'll, I'm gonna show you these. There'll be a link in the description below for them. So the first thing I wanna do is I really wanna get this bottom pipe into this stove really well basically where it's about an inch down and it looks like there's some like little not clips but there's something down in there that'll keep this pipe from going down any further so i've put this dampener in first and then i'm going to go ahead and put this first piece of pipe on and then i'm going to start drilling these in and then we're going to screw i'm going to put three screws in each one all right let's get going with this so i want this pipe to go down as far as possible and i still want it to be straight up and down but i want these there's kind of not they're not rivets they're little indentions in the pipe as it necks down as it goes into the other pipe and i want that to go down uh, to the top of that now one thing i want to make sure of that's about an inch and a half and so i'm going to put these screws in down about three quarters of an inch Okay, these are supposed to be self-drilling screws, so we are going to see, I'm not gonna be perfect with this, 
But I am uh, going to, again, about three quarters of an inch down, about a third of the way around each pipe. I thought about pre-drilling these holes, but they said this works, so we'll see. Not working as well as I like. Let me go get the drill set. Again, the reason I'm doing this is because I've had so many camping trips that have had some a lot of rain and some severe storms. So you just always want to be prepared. Okay, that went through a lot easier. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get the first screw in here and then I'll check it for being level again. Now I don't want to over tighten this because I don't want this pipe to dent in on me. I just want enough of it to secure it so that in three lo different locations here, it'll handle the wind and anything that hopefully Colorado can throw at it. All right, so it still looks straight on each side. Let's get some other holes drilled. This doesn't have to be perfect. It is a tent. I just want it to be pretty straight. This is taking a little bit more time to get this set up, but I'm gonna be much happier with this when I'm out camping because, man, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, that storm was horrible. I'm actually gonna to go to the top end first, or second. I'm gonna take these top two pipes. So let's push this all the way down as far as you can. What's bothering me about this a little bit, I want this to go down inside this, this next pipe down where this indentions here, or whatever you want to call it, where it's been crimped down. I want it to go to here. Right now it's not going very far, so I don't know how well the screw is going to embed in that. Actually, I could be having to pound on this a little bit when I push it down to get it to go farther. One thing I'm actually thinking about doing is not taking these all apart so maybe leave them in sections all right that's pretty straight nothing like working in the rain it's nothing it's just minor little little drizzle all right i think that's pretty straight for camping straight how's that for you okay so this is the top of the pipe and I can see that I'm in the middle of each of these pieces that fit together, the screws. They do go through quite a ways. So if I were going to make one recommendation, I've got, how long are these? These are one inch screws. Just by looking how far they go through, you could go half inch and be fine. Now, before I go any farther, let's talk about this. I got a little mad last time about how this went on. And I do have... A, another spark arrester but it has the hood on it and it has three metal pieces that come off to support the hood and I've got some more guy rope and carabiners they're metal and I'm gonna hook on and I'm gonna strap the top of this thing down so that in a high wind not only is the tent holding it the base with the stove holding it but the top is being held by three guy wires but this really irritated me last time I was able to get it on but I needed a knife and I just used a butter knife. I don't have the butter knife with me, so I'm gonna go get it. What happens though is these little tiny pieces at the bottom, they are rounded, so it does make it a little bit better, but it, gets, it catches on the edge of that pipe. So you wanna get it as round as possible, but you still need something, a knife of some sort to slide up underneath this to pull it over the edge of that pipe. And I'll show you that in a second. I'm not gonna have to worry about this in the future. I have that other covered spark arrestor coming in this week. All right, so here's how this is going to go. And this is really not easy. It might be easier this time since I've already done it one time. But you have to get this knife or some straight edge, some flat edge underneath. And see, it came off on the other side. It really was a pain. Okay, so I think I have it on. I do not want this to slide up. There we go. 
Once you get it on, it slides down real well. So I've slid it down about four inches and I'm good. I will not secure this. Honestly, I don't think I'll be using this anymore. I will keep it just in case something happens to the new spark arrestor, that covered one that's coming in. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this other third piece on here. I'll secure it. Those three pieces will all, always stay together. So when I put my tent up, I'll slide this piece up into the tent, the top of the tent. I'll set this up and then I'll put it right on top of it. Then I'll go outside and I'll put this piece up. But I think you may need a step stool. If you're gonna do this, you know, depending on how tall you are, the might, you might need a step stool at the campsite. So let's take this piece off. We're gonna get this down lower so I can work on it over here. Okay, why does every project take so much more time and is more complicated than it should be? So it's not perfectly straight. The top is a little crooked right there. And you can see that. I'd like to re-drill those holes, but it is a tent. So I did my best to keep it straight. I didn't use the level. This piece, the real problem with this top piece, it was, the other pieces are real tight. For some reason, this one's loose, and that's what caused the problem for me here. When I set this tent up, I'm gonna put this up through, through the top of the tent, and I will have to have a stepladder because I'm gonna to have to be outside the tent and screw this one into this one. But I'm gonna bring it back down here and do that, and even though it's a little crooked, you know, basically what'll probably happen is it'll be a little crooked maybe inside the tent so the top is straight. Because I know right now, when I put this up, this is going to get real wobbly on me. And I really need to pound this down in here. But because I'm going to be out, in the, you know, out camping with this, I don't want to have to, I will have a sledgehammer with me, but I don't want to use the sledgehammer as much as possible. So I want to see how far this actually goes down. It only goes about a half inch. I'm going to have to put these screws a little closer to the top. And I can pound on it a little bit to maybe get it to set down in there a little bit more. Not much, but a little bit. All right, let's get this first hole in here and let's see if I can hold it myself without calling one of my kids out here. Now, I don't think this is a two person job once the tent is set up. It's this first time around here of getting the screw in, getting the screws in here when I'm trying to handle it by myself. All right, that's the last screw. Now you may be looking at this going, much trouble as you've had here, I don't want to screw it in. But I will promise you, when you get a really big windstorm popping up, unexpected or expected, you'll be thankful that you secured your pipe. Now this isn't the only way to secure it. You can get guy wires or guy rope and tie down from the top if you have that cover. You could actually screw in some of those uh, pieces that you know that have a rounded end on top. I can't even think the name right now. But you could do that with this mesh, but I'm gonna have a different top, so I'll be able to secure it that way. But I'm just telling you, as much of a pain this was and I didn't get it perfect, I'm gonna be much happier with this when I'm camping knowing that a storm isn't going to take this down there's a hot fire inside and then i'm having a trouble with wanting to grab this stove pipe which will burn my hands or you know maybe it's tipping the stove over whatever it might be this is just giving me a lot better opportunity to be safe and having that comfort level that in a strong storm i can still run a fire inside even though camp chef says don't have a fire in your stove during high winds 
if you secure your tent well and you secure your pipe well, then that's up to you. That's your decision. I'm going to, depending on how high the winds are, then I would have a fire in the stove. But that's my personal opinion. I'm not giving any advice here. Okay, before I go put this wood in here, I want to show you how long a piece of wood you can have. It's 22 and a half inches to the front inside. So I would say if you want to be safe, well, no more than 22 inches, but I would say probably 20 inches for your wood at the most. And all these pieces I have over here are less than that. So let's get the fire going. Now all that stuffing I was complaining about earlier is gonna go in here and I'm gonna use it to help start the fire. Now I'm gonna cheat here and I have two fire starters and I want this to get going pretty quick and I don't want it to struggle. So these are Duraflame fire start cubes. I'll have some information in the description below about this. And so let's get a, both these in here. Good place where I can light it so i got some little pieces i'm gonna add these in after that fire gets going and let's start the fire and we'll see how good the fire starter does i know that the paper will burn really quick i'm gonna get this going here on top i'm gonna put it sideways a little bit the thing about fires at least what I've learned, and if you're a Boy Scout or a Girl Scout, you can correct me all you want. But I've always found if you do a teepee or you crisscross your logs or your, your starter, because you want the air to come through. So if you put a lot on it, you're gonna stop the air and, and it's just gonna keep me, it's gonna make it harder to start a fire. I've always found the teepees work the best. <laughs> I'll tell you though, it smells really good. I've got to go get some more wood because this is hardwood right here. And you want the stove to burn the hardwood because it's just going to last longer. Most places where you go camping and you buy firewood at the convenience store, it's pine. It's soft wood. And that stuff burns really fast. You don't want your wood to burn fast here because you, if you could, you would like it to last all, all night. Well, I'm going to be doing some more research on this stove on how to secure that, that pipe. Also on types of food to cook. You can cook on top here. And it, I'm just going to show you all kinds of stuff in the coming months and years. But I want to take this opportunity to ask you to please like, subscribe, share, and turn on notifications so you'll be alerted as soon as we put out new videos because we have a lot of great videos coming up this weekend of course we're going up setting up a new tent we're going to be using this cooking things on it watch for that those videos coming up because uh, you're going to see some great fishing so alpine fishing lake fishing we're going to do some ice fishing this year mike's got a new toy hauler and so we're going to be heading out places there around the mountain region up into canada we have a lot of plans and a lot of videos coming up so keep an eye out for those videos coming up because i don't know if we have one every day coming out but two or three videos every week coming out all right i'm going to start my timer now i'm going to go for two hours i think that's burning hot enough in there to get that enamel to set i think is what they say and again, it's because they've painted it, right? And it's enamel paint. And you don't want the smells of that coming off for the first time when you're in your tent trying to go to sleep. Well, the fire's not really hot yet. Still some paper in the bottom that hasn't burnt. But it's getting there. It's not gonna die on me. I just wanna tell you, having a stove in your tent, having this fire going, makes all the difference in the world. Mike and I have had some really rough camping over the last year, year and a half, where it's just getting really cold or it's really raining a lot. And it's really miserable. And you can say, hey, yeah, but hey, you have a camp going, fire going outside. That's awesome. Uh, but if the weather's okay. The other thing is you know, we have we have the Mr. Heater Big Buddies, the Portable Buddies. We're going to be getting the Little Buddies soon for when we're in smaller tents. And, and being inside, like last year we were at Miramonte and we had our four season tents. And we had, well Mike had his Winterwell stove. 
and I had the big buddy going. And that made all the difference in the world to go from 12 to 15 degrees at night to 60, 65 in the tent. And man, it's, I slept so good. And having that fire or you know the, the glow, that red glow from the big buddy heater, it just it gives a warmth and it makes it feel nicer. But I'm telling you or what, you know, when Mike and I were out there at the same camping trip, but he was, you know, he had his winter well stove in his big 12 by 12 Kodiak canvas cabin lodge tent, I think it is. I'll have information on that. And in fact, I'm gonna put a video right here and on how Mike set that tent up. But that, that description will be in the below. What I really wanna show you here is how he set his winter well up and then what he cooked on it. So that video is, is right there, but it'll also be in the description below. But when it was so cold at night and we were in that tent and we were, we were cooking, he made orange rolls, he made, we had pizza, what else? Oh, we had apple pie, Alamo. We put, we put the ice cream just outside the tent. It was so cold that it was fine out there. And then we made that apple pie, Dutch apple pie with the ice cream. And we're sitting inside, the glow of the fire, the warmth of the fire, the crackle and the pop, and then the smell of the wood. I'm telling you, when, if you want to camp right, just check stoves out like this. Because yeah, they do cost more money to get the tent, that, the stove ready tents. And there are adapters and things that you could put uh, the pipe through at your own tent. It's not stove ready, but you really want a canvas tent. And having this setup, paying, saving money, paying the extra money, and getting a stove, having that tent, it's so much nicer because there's times when the weather's just horrible. And if you can be in your tent eating comfortably, nice and warm and the storm's going outside the snowstorm or the, the thunderstorm and you're inside it just makes camping a lot more enjoyable well i'm going to keep this fire stoked for the next hour and a half and follow the instructions on it and i'm going to be ready for the camping trip coming up this weekend so keep an eye out for those videos but check out mike's winter well stove we've done several videos on his stove how you set it up you know, how the cooking on it, things like that, and you'll really enjoy it. It's a great stove. The nice thing about the Winterwell stove is it has a glass side on this particular model, and I don't recall the exact model he has. It'll be on the screen. You'll have an image of it. So the next time you see me, though, I will be up in the mountains here in Colorado testing this out for real. It's a little early in the season for it. It's September 15th. No, not even the 15th, about the 10th. It's too warm to really be using this stove, but I want to get it set up and I want to test it for when I really do need it. And it really does get cold because we're going to be up at the Miramonte Reservoir very last week of October. And I guarantee you, I'm going to need it then. So anyway, I'm just running through the whole thing, making sure the tents all set up and ready to go, making sure I understand everything about this stove. So again, I'm going to be bringing you a lot more videos on it and things you can cook on it too, to how to cook some great food and really enjoy your camping adventure. Well, thanks for joining me here at Mike and Rick Outdoors. And Mike and I will see you back out here soon with some new great videos and some great camping and hunting and fishing adventures. So keep an eye out for that and we will see you back here soon.